Hello everybody. So this is a pottery video. I've had a lot of pottery people say, too much banjo. So I'm pointing at my fan so I can show you that it's directly above some of the day's work, which is mostly number 25s. In other words, 25 wet pounds of clay. Now you'll see there's sort of a strange thing going on here. This is a, for me, this is a real breakthrough. Um, for years and years and years, I've had pots, as they dry well, right here, you get a split from it drying too fast. So, uh, my clay distributor said, well, you, you got to keep the rims wet longer. And, of course, you know, you hear that in school, and I always thought that was, you know, sort of correct, but... I've taken it to an extreme. So what I'm doing is the pots when they're thrown again I put them directly under this fan and they get hard a little quicker by that I mean they're they're leather hard enough that I can cut them under turn them over and fettle and the bottoms are just uh, hard enough that they don't fall in now I'm touching these right now because they've had about three or four hours and when you fast dry things like this the uh, sometimes the bottom bows up. So I'm just checking and making sure that they're not going to do that. Tomorrow morning I'm going to take well I'll, I'll come back and do a little bit more of this clip tomorrow but in the morning, this bottom part of the pot will be bone dry. So it's the next morning. I've turned this up to high when I closed the kill last night. Now remember, these are 25 pound pots. Look at that. I mean, almost fireable bone dry. They're going to get checkered yet. But what's really amazing is I've, I've spent, you know, days and days and days to get pots like this dry without a split in the bottom. And to be this rough with a 25 pounder. So just to recap, the trick seems to be that you cover up the bottom half of this pot while it's still so wet that the the top barely stays in place and then you rush the bottom of the pot to dry first before you do the rest maybe everybody else knows this this is the sort of thing that makes me crazy you know here I am at 60 years old going hey look I can get it so the bottom doesn't split uh, but that's just the way of it okay I'll show you these pots without the bags on them so I've taken off the bags and I'm just again just going to leave them underneath this very uh, blowy blowy wind moving air gets rid of water faster than almost anything. I mean, even more than heat. Uh, so I'm going to leave these here, go off and have some breakfast. It's uh, quarter to nine. And a little later I'll put them in the kiln and checker them. In other words, I'll put one down, one up with some stilts in between. And I will leave it in a kiln at 200 degrees. And then after that I'll rub some minerals on the pots just to warm them up a little bit so that when they fire at 03 they they have uh, uh, some interest to them. If I left these just plain and fired them at 03 they, they wouldn't look exactly like concrete but they look pretty plain. Okay, all the best. So it's a little before 11 o'clock in the morning and I've moved most of these into the kill but I just wanted to show you how much of the water has been pushed off uh, by those fans. There's still 
there's still some darkness there but they're ready for checkering so you can see in this kill that I put three bricks down and I have one pot upside down so there'll be another one in there it'll look like the way this kill is set up here there's one there and then there's two inside each other uh, one below some bricks to hold it up and then the one above and then in this kill I have a uh, what's called in the business a soper and I'm just going to drop this lid down onto that so that uh, at this kill is going to be put at 200 degrees to push off the rest of the water and there's no reason that if I left it open it just would take a lot more electricity <coughs> to keep up to that 200 degrees oh and this kill is at 700 right now cooling from yesterday and I have another one on top of there uh, this one you can see is a little darker I put this is a very good thing I, sh I put this over here right away and didn't leave it in under the fan so that this is at an hour sitting on top of an 800 at when I put it on you know 800 degree kill and see that it's still um, darker so that moving air it's like I say it, it really moves things along so I've just turned this kill on it's at 85 degrees at the moment because the room's hot and I've put the soaper to hold the lid open enough that um, all that water is going to just pour out of this kill with the heat and the same with this one so we have six of these 24 pounders literally made yesterday that are going to be ready for firing tonight it's as I say about 11 o'clock now somewhere around two or three I'll take these out and I'll give them a rubbing with minerals put them back in a checker and at five o'clock I will stack them in the kill for firing for tomorrow just amazing just amazing how fast these have gotten dry or will be dry enough to fire so I've just taken these three pots out of checkering it's uh, six o'clock at night and they've spent most of the day um, in a checker or a 200 degree oven and then they've been covered with a little bit of mineral just to wake them up a little bit and then I'm just setting up the kill right now it's on idle 274 degrees from the 200 degrees it's been at all day but I've put uh, five bricks in a circle with one in the middle and then I've set up a spot for a pot to go upside down in other words, um, this, there's one of the pots is going to sit off the ground and be supported by this one set up here. And you'll see what that looks like in a sec. So that one pot I've put in upside down on the thing that I've set up there. And then the second one, the way the hole is in the bottom, I can just take some supports. and put them right up the middle of that where that hole is with a small shelf and that's where the second pot will be supported so the second pot has gone inside the first one and the walls aren't touching anywhere so that that's the important thing it doesn't want to have any pressure on the one below it there's a lot of room in this kill if, uh, if I was being frugal I'd wait till I had some number fours to you know make a stack on both sides there that would put the yield on this kill up by another two or three hundred dollars uh, but I have um, a lot of pots to get going I have a few number twos that I've made today and those are going to go in with um, tomorrow's load which is three more that are been checkering in this kill so that's uh, quick drying number 24 pound pots and putting them into a kill the next day. Okay, everybody, talk to you another time.